In this video, I will explain the difference between local extremum and extremum. I will also state the local extreme value theorem. This theorem is useful on its own, but it is also the first step in our journey towards the mean value theorem. Before I define local extremum, let's look at an example. Consider the function f defined by this graph. Its domain is the interval 0, 5, including both endpoints. This function has a minimum and a maximum. The minimum happens at this point P. I can say that F has a minimum of one at X equals three. The maximum happens at this point Q. It is an endpoint, but there is nothing wrong with that. I can say that F has a maximum of five at X equals five. But what about this third point R? The function does not have a maximum at R, the value at r is 3 and the function takes values greater than 3 somewhere else. However, if I stay close to r only, if I only look at the piece of the graph near r, then it looks like a maximum. I am going to call this point a local maximum. In this example, I say that f has a local maximum at x equals 1. Let's define this concept rigorously. Let f be a function with domain i and let c be a point in i. I want to define what it means for f to have a maximum at c and to have a local maximum at c. We already knew the definition of maximum. We say that f has a maximum at c when f of x is less than or equal to f of c for all values of x in i. Now for the new concept. We say that f has a local maximum at c when for every x close to c, f of x is less than or equal to f of c. It is fine to leave the definition as is, but I can also take this piece for every x close to c and rewrite it more formally. For every x close to c means for every x on some interval centered at c. Or equivalently, it means that there exists some positive radius delta such that if the distance between x and c is less than delta, then f of x is less than or equal to f of c. And that is an entirely equivalent way of writing the definition. There are also analogous definitions for minimum and local minimum. I will not write them explicitly, but I will assume you can write them. This definition requires some comments, mostly about terminology. The word extremum means maximum or minimum. If I want to talk about both of them at once, I can simply say extremum. Some people prefer to say global extremum instead of simply extremum, to emphasize the difference between local and global. Global extremum means the same as simply extremum. The plural of extremum, maximum, minimum is extrema, maxima, minima. It is an irregular plural. And the most important note, according to the definition I am using, endpoints never count as local extrema because the function needs to be defined to the left and to the right of C. This is controversial. Some books prefer to use a different definition, which I am not writing, and that other definition includes endpoints. There are good reasons to go either way. The majority of calculus textbooks use the definition in this video, and that is why I will be using it, which does not include endpoints. But the majority of analysis textbooks use the other one. It is a matter of convention. So remember that when you're reading math somewhere else, they may be using a different convention. There is one specific point where this distinction is very important and it makes a big difference. I will point to it later in this video. Okay, now that we have our definitions, let's move towards the local extreme value theorem. I want to explore this question. What can we say about the derivative of a function at the local extremum? The function in this graph has a local maximum. The tangent line at the local maximum is horizontal and the derivative is zero. It also has a local minimum, and the derivative of the local minimum is also zero. It looks like this will happen at local extrema always. Well, not always. Here is the graph of a function that has a local maximum and a local minimum, but it does not have derivative zero at those points, because it has corners at those points, and the derivative does not exist. That seem to be the only two options, and that is what the local extreme value theorem says. Specifically, let f be a function with domain and interval i, and let c be a point in i. If f has a local extremum at c and 
c is an interior point, not an endpoint, then the derivative f prime of c either is zero or does not exist. One very important observation. Given the definition of local extremum that I am using, it was not necessary to say explicitly that c must be an interior point. I could omit the second hypothesis, because it was already included in the first hypothesis that f had a local extremum at c. However, I chose to be redundant and write it explicitly anyway to emphasize it. If you use the other definition, the one that allows for endpoints, then you definitely must include the second hypothesis. In summary, whether you allow endpoints to be called local extrema or not, I do not, you must exclude endpoints from this theorem. Having clarified that, one last definition. We often give a name to these special points. We say that C is a critical point of F when it is an interior point of the domain and the derivative f prime of c either is zero or does not exist. With this notation, the theorem simply says that local extrema are always critical points. Notice that the converse is not true. A critical point is not always a local extremum. Now that we understand the theorem, we need to prove it. That will be the next video. While the local extreme value theorem was mostly our starting point towards the mean value theorem, it is also important on its own, and it has its own applications. In a later video, I will show an application, how to find the local and global extrema of a function.